Hi, so you may know that I've got an interest in pre-hospital points of care testing and together with a team in Bristol uh, led by Jonathan Benga, we were lucky enough to get an NIHR grant to work up an application for a platform trial to evaluate pre-hospital points of care testing. And as part of this, we had to decide which tests might go into the platform first. So which ones were the highest priority to evaluate as part of a clinical trial? We needed a system to do that. Now, many years ago, I did a course on multiple criteria decision analysis, and I've always wanted to use this technique. Well, now we've finally got to use it, and we've been doing this for a few months now. But today we just had a workshop where we put some of the finishing touches to our first multiple criteria decision analysis, or MCDA, and I want to tell you about it because this is a really powerful method that you could use to help inform your research or actually to make any complex decision where there are a number of different options and a number of different things, criteria, that you've got to think about to weigh up against each other. So let me tell you about how you do multiple criteria decision analysis. So I'm going to just take you through a little tour, basically, of the method. So... Um, this method is used when you've got multiple options. So in this case, you know, we've got numerous different options for the platform trial. We could look at troponin testing for the diagnosing myocardial infarction, lactate for sepsis, lactate for trauma. We could look at beta HCG for pregnancy testing. We could look at ketones for diagnosing diabetic ketoacidosis. There's loads of different options and we can't choose them all. We've got to prioritize the top ones. So we've got to have a system to do that. But we also have multiple criteria. So there's not just one sort of key metric that we need to look at to decide that whether you know this is the top priority to be evaluated in a trial. There are multiple different criteria that we might want to look at. So when those circumstances are present, that's when we might decide to use multiple criteria decision analysis. So the first thing we've got to think of in this case, in our case study, is what are we trying to achieve through pre-hospital point of care testing? What's the objective of it? And it may be that there's not just one objective, but there's multiple objectives. We're trying to do all sorts of different things. So, for example, we may be trying to improve patient safety. So it may be that we're trying to, uh, well, reduce mortality or morbidity for patients. Uh, it may be that we're trying to improve efficiency. So we're actually trying to make better use of healthcare um, resources. Or it may be that we're trying to do more with the funds that are available to us. So we're essentially trying to find a lower cost option. And all of these things might be important for the thing that we're trying to achieve. And indeed, in a platform trial, when we think about pre-hospital point of care testing, all of those things are important. We've got to think about having an efficient healthcare system that um, has the lowest cost possible to get the best patient outcomes, but it's also got to have the best patient safety. And we can measure that in all sorts of different ways. So we have multiple different objectives. So how do we do this? Well, the first step is to identify the, well, the options, first of all, I should say, the options, the tests that might go into the um, multiple criteria decision analysis. So we might do that, for example, by reviewing the literature. We might do a literature search to see what's out there. Um, we might look at manufacturers. So we might go to industry bodies. We might go to companies that we know of. Um, uh, or we might do searches to see where we see companies that uh, that have an interest in this area. And then we might see what's available, what's on the market. Those might be the options. And then we can look for evidence around those. And then once we've got the options, we've got to see, well, what are criteria are we going to measure them by? So these, this, these are the things that we're going to use to decide whether these tests should go into our platform trial. And it might be helpful to think of it instead of criteria, think of it as a set of advantages and disadvantages of each option. Okay, so we do that. And then we've got to think, right, so we've got a, a list of criteria and we're going to do that the, the, uh, with the options. We're going to do that by looking at, you know, what companies manufacture and looking at the published literature with the criteria. We've got to work with stakeholders. So we've got to find out who the stakeholders are, invite them to take part. And what we did in uh, our program, we, um, we got the stakeholders to do a survey. So they took part in a survey to sort of brainstorm ideas. And then we held a workshop at which we discussed all of the ideas that had come out of the survey. Uh, and we refined them. We thought of more ideas at the workshop. 
And then we had a second round of survey where we put forward the ideas that have come together so far and we tried to get consensus on some of those ideas. We also then used that survey and the workshop to try and help us understand which of those criteria are vital. So are there any deal breakers that mean that one of the options that we're considering is actually got to be thrown out? So is it that, you know, for a point of care test in the pre-hospital environment, for example, if it's massive and it's not going to fit in an ambulance, then it's a bit of a deal breaker because we can't use it if it doesn't fit in the ambulance. If it hasn't got a power supply that you can use in an ambulance, then it's a deal breaker. It's going to be out. That sort of thing. We, we wanted the stakeholders to try and identify what are the deal breakers. And that's going to help us to trim down our long list of options down to a much more manageable short list for consideration. And then the last thing we're going to do is weight the criteria. So really importantly, we're going to be weighing out uh, different outcomes. So we're going to be looking at, for example, one pathway might have an advantage in that the mortality rate is reduced over standard care, but then that might cost a lot more than another pathway. Another car pathway might help us to um, free up ambulances, but at the same time, uh, the accuracy might be slightly lower. So we, we, we can't weight all of those things equally. We're going to have to have some kind of system to determine well, which one's most important. So we have to weight the criteria. We have to assign a weight. So it may be, for example, that we say, well, you know, it's really important that the test has good accuracy, diagnostic accuracy. So we'll assign a really high weight to that. Uh, whereas cost, it's important, but it's not quite as important as accuracy. So we give a, a lower weight. And we're going to use that later when we've got a scoring system to decide on which option is best. So what we did for that is we we set we, we had to have classification systems. We proposed classification systems for each of the criteria. And we asked, how important do you think this is? And we did that from zero to 10. And the stakeholders respond and then we get the average of those responses. And that's what we used to assign the weight to, to determine how important each criterion is. And then we have a workshop with all of the stakeholders. We present them with all of the information. They have pre-reading material and then we go through it at the um, workshop. They have a chance to ask questions. And then we do the live scoring and that's where it gets really exciting. It's a bit like the Eurovision Song Contest because we, we score all, the, all of these options as we go through and we get live results as well. So that's when it's really exciting. It's a great method. I really enjoyed using it. We're going to write it up so you'll hear more about it. But I wanted to say a little bit about it now because hopefully you might be able to use it. And it might not just be research. You may want, let's say, want to buy a new point of care test in your emergency department. You're not sure which one of several options to choose. This could give you an easy method that you could apply to decide which one is for your emergency department. I hope that helps.